Hey everyone, our last couple live streams had a ton of questions regarding finding an agent, so I'm super excited for the opportunity to chat with a true veteran of the industry from one of the most respected and in-demand talent agencies. Our guest today has over 20 years of experience representing talent. She's been nominated three times for Adult Theatrical Agent of the Year. In 2019, she was nominated by both the San Fernando Valley Business School and the Los Angeles Business Journal's Women's Council for Executive of the Year. She is currently the Vice President of Clear Talent Group as well as the Director of the Theatrical Department. Please, everybody, welcome Brianna Ansel. Hi. Hello. So happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for uh, joining us, Brianna. Um, would love to know a little bit about yourself and about kind of how you got started and maybe a little bit about Clear Talent Group for those that don't know. Certainly. So I am from, I'll, I'll give you the, the, put it in a nutshell as much as I can. I'm from Northern California and my performance background is actually as a dancer. I grew up dancing and that was one of my passions. And I ended up through a series of different choices. I ended up going to college for dance. I got my BFA in dance and choreography from UC Irvine. And after graduating, after trying to figure out what I wanted to do, uh, I happened to meet an agent who was uh, part of a talent competition that I was working for. And we met, we hit it off. And, and basically, he offered me a position as an assistant at an agency that he was working at at the time. And that was my first foray into the business um, in, in, on that side. Yeah. And uh, I, I wasn't sure if I was going to like it, but it turned out I did. And I initially was working directly with dancers because that was my background. And I started also then helping dancers transition their careers into acting and the theatrical side of things. And just kind of worked my way up and from an assistant to an agent. And then in 2003, Tim O'Brien, who was the gentleman that hired me, he decided to open his own company, his own agency, and that's when Clear Talent Group was born. And so I came with him with the goal and the desire to really establish our theatrical department for the agency. We wanted to continue to be full service and really provide as much as we could for our clients. And I was had developed a real passion for the theatrical film and television side of things. Yeah. So then it just grew from there. And uh, we're a bi-coastal agency. We have been since almost the, the day we um, opened. And so we represent talent, mostly um, on camera talent in front of the camera, as opposed to below the line um, directors and the other type of um, talent. But um, theatrical, commercial print, theater, kids, digital, dance, choreography. Everything. A little bit of everything. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. Um, I mean, we, yeah, I know Clear Talent Group is just kind of known for um, representing actors of all types. And so that, that's really interesting to see kind of where you started and where you're at today because you know so often people don't know how much work goes into getting from point a to point b right so th that that's super exciting to hear about um i we got a ton of questions uh emailed in so we're going to go through them uh for everybody and then we'll also take uh, questions from the audience but thought that we would start at the very beginning in terms of getting an agent um, so I think the first question we'd want to ask is now a good time. Are agents currently looking for new talent considering everything that's going on right now? It is an interesting time. And I think the answer to that question is it depends. I have heard from some people that they are using this time to go through new talent submissions, look at demos, really do that work and see if there's anybody that catches their eye that they can sign, get them ready for when things start firing again. And I think that's, uh, a, a, I think that's awesome. I think that 
a lot of times we don't have time to go through every single submission that thoroughly. So I think that's a great approach. And then there's also other agents that are saying, you know what, I, I can't really reason bringing anybody on right now because there's just really no work going on. Um, and so, you know, they're focusing on their current roster and how they can be a support system for their current roster and try to conjure up anything that is out there for their clients, set, bring those clients opportunities, et cetera, without shifting focus to the new. So I think it really depends. And I, I wouldn't say that you should, I, I don't think it's black and white. I don't think you can say, okay, well, I'm not going to submit right now because nobody's accepting. I think it just depends on who you're going after. And you may just have to try, you know, various avenues because you might catch people at a really good time right now or you might not. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, maybe worth it to try and then you just never know. It, it's hard to tell what each agency is doing. Um, Absolutely. So um, following up on that, um, for you sp specifically and for Clear, um, so you, you get a lot of submissions to your agency, and this could apply to all agencies as well, but what are you looking for when considering a talent? So what are the things that your agency is trying to find? Yeah. There's a lot of criteria and a lot of factors. I would say that talent is first and foremost. We, we've got to feel like the actor is, is talented and we yeah. see something there and we can, we want to, you know, get excited about them. I think that's really key is, is like, I want to be excited about the actor. Yeah. Um, you know, we're obviously also looking at our existing rosters and who else do we have? And, you know, you know a lot of actors kind of overlap sometimes on type, but is there something unique that we feel like isn't too much of the same for what, for who we've already got. And, you know, we're also really focused on maintaining a certain caliber of talent on our roster. So we also want to make sure, does this person, person, this, this actor fit within the, the reputation of, as a whole of, of the actors that, that people have come to trust in, in us representing. So it's a reflection of, our agency and our company as well, the actors that we represent. So is, is this actor, are we going to feel like they're going to support that, that as well? And, you know, it's, it's, it's also, do, do we see some marketability there? And by that, I mean, are there things about this actor that I feel like I can use to really sell them, pitch them, get somebody else excited about the bottom line is like, if I'm not super excited about somebody, how can I expect somebody else to be? And that's what yeah. we do as agents. We're, we're salesmen in many, many ways. So I have to feel like I can find those things and really get that actor so that I can sound enthusiastic about them. It's like this, it's such a roller coaster, this industry. And, uh, you know, I want to feel about, I want to feel excited about getting on that roller coaster because yeah. I know there's going to be ups and downs, but if it looks like it's going to be a boring roller coaster, I don't want to, I don't want to get on. Right. So there's, there's gotta be something that, that I am, that it attracts me to them. What attracts me to an actor may not be somebody else either. And I, I can't emphasize that enough that don't, expect to please everybody. Yeah. Don't expect to get the yes from everybody because everybody has different tastes and that's just the nature of the business. Along that same line, I think you always have to remember that your path is going to be different than somebody else's. Right. To compare yourself to your friend, other actors, it can be, I think, a bit of a a danger in terms of your psyche, your mental health, and your emotions mm -hmm. with this business. Just trust that your journey is yours and that the right agent is going to be the one that is like, th that gets you. And that's what you want. You want somebody that really gets you and that's going to be passionate about you. Yeah. And I think um, it kind of goes off what our casting director was saying last week in terms of just knowing yourself and, and being real with who it is you are and, and what you bring to the table as an actor and um, what makes you unique. And, and, mm -hmm. and, and once you know that it makes it easier for uh, th that to shine through and, and your agent or prospective agent might pick up on that. Yeah, it's really true. I mean, I want to know that when I 
meet with somebody or I see their materials or when I start working with them, they have a pretty strong sense of who they are. I like to call it like their actor identity, like where they, what their kind of their niche is and what types of roles. It doesn't have to be like what, what, what characters necessarily, but what attributes are you bringing to the roles? Like who, who are, who's your identity in that regard? Don't expect to find an agent and say, okay, here I am, do something with me now. You know, like, yeah. uh, you know, it, it's like, no, you need to, you need to be giving to that and you need to understand who you are so that we can take that. Maybe we can reshape it, mold it, give you some, you know, we can fine tune it. We can take it and run with it, but it is really important that you have a strong awareness of, of really who you are as an actor. Yeah, that's great. And, um, following up with that, um, what are some checklist items um, that I should do before submitting myself to an agent? Um, and actually, before we get into that, I, I actually have another question. Mm -hmm. So we talked about what you're looking for, but as a talent, what should I be looking for? So I want to get an agent, but what should I look for in an agent um, regardless of city? Mm -hmm. Well, I mentioned passion. You want to feel like somebody is passionate about you and that, that you feel that you feel like they really understand your goals and what you're looking to achieve in your career and that there are going to be a team team player. I mean, it, it is a, it is a, a, a relationship. It's a, it's a team, whether it's just you and your agent or if there's a manager involved. I mean, there's it is very much a team and, and people need to be, you need to be playing by the same rules. You need to have the same game plan. Um, I don't know how many other sports analogies I can throw in there, but all <laughs> yeah. of them. Uh, and um, so, you know, it, that that's really important. So asking questions of any agent that you're interviewing with about how, how do they pitch and promote new clients? Uh, what kinds of things are they doing? to help get you out there? How accessible are they? How often do they like to hear from you? Everybody's gonna have some different criteria and ways that they like to work. And you wanna make sure that that aligns with how you want to work with your representation. Some people are totally cool with like, agent, just tell me when you need something from me and I'll do it. Others really feel like they need a little more interaction and that's those are both totally le two legitimate ways of working and having a relationship. Yep. Just make sure that you're all on the same page because some agents are going to lean more towards one than the other. So that's really important. So I, I would say, I would say like when you, if you were, if you get an, an, uh, an interview with an agent for a possible representation, sure, you go into that feeling like they're interviewing you, but remember that you are interviewing them as well. I mean, you don't want to interrogate them, but ask these questions so you can get a strong understanding about how they work. And uh, it's because it's really, it's got to be a mutually beneficial relationship. Yeah, that's great. Now we can get into our, our checklist items because I had a, I, I got a lot of questions about I heard that you know I shouldn't go uh, for an agent until I'm in a union, or I shouldn't go for an agent until I get a reel, or I have some acting credits, or what have you. So, question is, there sure there probably are some checklist items I should do before trying to get representation. So, what are they? I think that there's the, there's some basics, and I think that is you you want to get your digital materials together because I think that having links to things are really the way to go. First of all, if somebody is not kind of digitally tuned in these days, it's, that can be a turnoff because so much is digital. I mean, look at us right here and um, the way that we submit, the way that we pitch, the way that we link to things is digital. So I want to know that somebody has done the work of, do you have an Actors Access account? Do you have an LA Casting or Casting Networks account? Do you have a Casting Friend? You know, whatever, whatever different sites you're on, all the different things. And do you have a website? It's not essential, but I would say it's highly beneficial as a way to 
be a showcase for you and your materials. So do you have a website that you can point to? And is your demo reel hosted there? Or is it hosted somewhere, whether that's a private link or not? So getting your digital arsenal all aligned, I think is a really important thing. So that's just kind of like your materials, right? I mean, headshot, I wouldn't go spend thousands of dollars on like this huge photo shoot while you're trying to get an agent. I would say get one or two solid looks but wait for that bigger shoot until you get representation who can help guide that shoot, give you some instructions on what to shoot, who to perhaps some photographer referrals and give you some more direction so that you're really getting your money's worth. Unfortunately, I've seen it happen a number of times where, you know, we signed somebody and they had a photo shoot they spent a bunch of money for and the, the just the shots were kind of unusable right. they just they weren't going to be the thing that that uh, caught anybody's eye or they they didn't fit them or for whatever the reason yeah so i discourage against that you want to have your resume demo reel look i get it like not every actor every everybody starts out somewhere and yeah. not every actor has a beautiful demo reel with all these amazing all this amazing footage to begin with yeah. i will say this though and this goes back to the digital piece of what I was saying is that self tapes, uh, creating content footage, all these things have become so much the norm in our business that perhaps your agent isn't going to use a self tape reel necessarily to pitch you every day. But if you're talking about trying to just get an agent, a self tape reel, if that's all you've got is okay. Like we want to see what you can do and an amazing self tape might be that thing. It's going to be a lot better than having nothing. It is very difficult to get representation if there is no visual footage of any kind. Right. So I wouldn't say that you have to have a demo, but you should have you should have some kind of video footage of something to to share. Okay. And so, oh, you said something about the union versus non-union as well. Just basically, some people yeah. have said, like, do I need to be in the union first um, before I can pitch to an agent? I think it helps definitely, and I think that depends on the agency and the agent how important that is to them. If you're not in the union, there's there's definitely a bit more of an uphill battle, a challenge in getting an actor out there. So they have to be willing, the agent has to be willing to take on somebody who's a little bit more of a development client. And not all agents have the willingness to do that or the room to do that. Like sometimes we'll take on somebody if like they have a manager, for instance, and we know we're working together and they're going to get there and we really see some amazing potential in that person. And they might be non-union starting out, but you know, that's the goal. So it really depends on on the representation and what their preferences are. I would say it is a big asset though. And it also brings some, le some legitimacy to your experience and your work. So that's the other piece of it. It's not just like, will a casting director see you if you're union or non-union? It also, it brings something to your, 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 your credibility as a, as an experienced actor. Right. So, Let's say I have all those things. I, I've checked all those boxes. Um, how do I pitch myself to an agent? So how do I actually put everything together in a nice way that I guess is digestible for an agent mm -hmm. to, to see that and make sure that um, I stand out? Well, I think that like short and sweet and to the point is always the best way to go. So if like we're talking about an email, for instance, first thing you got to realize is like, we get so many emails every single day that aren't submissions that are just work and other stuff that are related to our, our current clients, business that we're doing, doing deals, casting, whatever. So in terms of attention span, it needs to be something that really grabs us and holds our attention. I would strongly urge against like big chunky paragraphs of 
content. <laughs> yeah. I, I will tell you, I look at that and I just glaze right over. <laughs> Editing is, uh, an, is an important skill set. Editing is your friend. Yeah. Editing is your friend for yeah. sure. I, this is my personal preference. I appreciate a, sh uh, a short, brief intro that maybe talks a little bit, maybe shows me a little piece of your personality. Get right into things like, what what is your actor identity? What are some of the recent credits or experience that you have? Bullet points, bolding things, things like that that really draw my eye and catch my eye are, are really good to use. Links to things, links to footage or, uh, whatever that may be, press or something that you want me to see, that's really helpful. And, you know, you don't have to just like pitch credits that are on your resume because I understand that not everybody might have those credits that are exciting to talk about. But some things that you can mention are strong relationships with people in the business that you might have that I might be intrigued and go, oh, okay, that's cool. That's something I might be able to kind of use and, and build on and capitalize on. Or accolades, awards, recognition that you've received. Also, if you had callbacks for something or you had an offer for something, and even though it didn't go your way, you made it particularly far. So these are things that I'm not gonna see on your resume, but speak to the things that you've accomplished so far, the things that are saying, okay, this this actor is like creating some momentum that I'm I could get excited about and maybe I want to like, you know, get on get on that roller coaster it, with. Yeah. Um so and and so keep that concise, keep it in a way that I I'm a big fan of uh, bullet points and and uh, really kind of listing out things that way and a nice a nice closing and make sure you, you include those links. I would avoid large attachments. Maybe yeah. you attach your resume and a low res headshot and everything else is links. Uh, a lot of people's inboxes have limits on what they can have in terms of attachments. So you certainly wouldn't want that to be the thing that kicks back right. um, your beautifully crafted pitch <laughs> to an agent. Yep. Um, you know, the other thing I want to say as well about when you're pursuing an agent is to do your research. Try to avoid just like getting a list of every agent in town, going on MailChimp and <laughs> creating some like mass email that's not personalized. To whom it may concern. <laughs> I, I, I'm speaking for myself yeah. that... If I get a, a, a submission for representation that doesn't say, dear Brianna, <laughs> and it's a mass email, yep. I, I'm deleting it. To whom it may and concern I, is uh, very off-putting. <laughs> what? To whom it may concern. I'd to whom it may concern I, is very off-putting, exactly. Yeah. Um, I have to use certain filters on how I start to go through all these email submissions. And I think all agents and managers do the same thing where they, they start to, you almost, I hate to say it, but you almost have to give yourself reasons to be like, okay, this is a no versus the yes. So sometimes what that is, if, well, often what it is for me is, is how personalized is this? So do your research, look up agencies that, seem like they would be a fit for where you are in your career. Size wise, type of representation, the, 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 what are you looking for? Commercial, theatrical, print, like what, what, are they, what do they have? What are you looking for? And target those agencies. Then, and so many people forget to do this, find out what their submission policy is. It's a very simple thing to do, but some people might have a specific email address that you need to use to send it to. Some might say, uh, we absolutely do not accept mailed in headshots and resumes, um, and it's all online. That's pretty much how we are at Clear Talent Group. Uh, there might be a certain person to direct that submission to. So doing that little step is gonna ensure that you are using the right pathway so that it lands in front of the right people. 
Yeah. So, and, and that you're also pursuing an agency that you feel like really you have a good, good chance of them representing you. You know, if you're just starting out, would you're not really probably going to go and submit to CAA. I mean, everybody right. knows this, right? Yeah. But you know, you got to kind of take that one step further and fine tune it even more and do your research and really know who's out there and the the, the agencies that you feel like would be a, a good fit. And and it helps to know why they would be a good fit. And sometimes people email me and they say, "This is this is why I feel like you know I'm a good fit for Clear Talent Group." And that tells me that they've done their research, and I, I respect that. Yeah, and ask around, uh, mm -hmm. you know, ask other actors. Who are they represented by? What do they think about them? Do they, you know, what is their, um, what's their referral, basically? It's really helpful. Yeah, um, absolutely. So I got this question a lot, um, and maybe because of the state of the world right now, but um, do I need to be local to be represented by an agency in that area? So, you know, you're in... You're by coastal. Do I need to be in LA or New York to have representation and why or why not? So these days I think actors are really pretty lucky in that your geographic location isn't as crucial. I would say that, first of all, I would say if you're in a regional market, like one of the, like the kind of, um, little Hollywoods that are out there, like whether that's Louisiana or Atlanta area in the Southeast, or even some like Chicago and some of the Midwest areas or, or Canada, or, you know, there's, there's these little kind of little Hollywoods that have hopped up around the world. Um, I think it's a great idea to build your resume up in those markets so that you look more attractive to like LA or New York, which are kind of, you know, considered maybe like the meccas of, of the business. I think that's a great way to do it. And then perhaps look for representation in LA and New York, having built up a resume in those smaller markets so that you then become a little more viable and sellable to, to the, the bigger pool. We represent some actors that do not live in Los Angeles. Uh, we have some people that we share in Atlanta. We have some people that we share in, and when I say share, I mean they have regional representation and we work with them as well. Um, Canada, um, London, um, Australia. I might be forgetting some, but so we definitely have some actors that are work can work both places. They maybe split their time. And we, if you're, if you're passionate enough about somebody, if you're excited enough about somebody, then I think that sure, then I don't think that's a limitation. I think it just really has to do with it is that is the agent willing to say, yeah, I want to commit to this person because I see something there, even though they're not physically in LA or New York, for example, there's, it can be challenging when somebody is just starting out because I think having relationships and meeting casting directors in person is a great way to, to build a network and get people to get excited about an actor. So you are missing out on that. So that's why I say build up a resume in a regional market so that you look more attractive. And, and then, and then also when you do decide to move, then you feel like you're bringing something to the table that you, you know, you've already kind of built up a foundation for yourself. Yeah, and some casting directors don't like self tapes, so they want you to be there in person. So mm -hmm. you know, keep that in mind as well. Um, yeah. So you know, being in those uh, smaller Hollywood hubs, like you mentioned, is is really helpful. Mm -hmm. um, so had a bunch of questions about um, older actors asking about representation, whether they left the business for a while and then they came back. Um, just feeling like so many of the roles are catered towards youth. How can I set myself apart as an older actor or do you have any advice for older actors? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not gonna lie, it can be a little bit more challenging. I think the business can be less forgiving when you're older, they sort of have, there's an expectation that you already have built up this long career and this long list of credits if you're of a certain age. 
And it, for younger actors in their teen, you know, kids, teens, early, you know, twenties, you know, they're the next expectation. Maybe your resume isn't as long yet. The reality is though, is that there are going to be roles of all ages out there. So I think the, the, the biggest thing and sometimes the hardest thing for actors, especially those that have had a career, took a long break and are trying to re-enter is to kind of, you have to be humble about it and realize you are probably going to have to take a step backwards a bit to get that going again and take some smaller roles that maybe you wouldn't have when your career left off last time. Let people know you're back. Let them see you. Let them fall in love with you again. Start to build up some current credits so that you look like a current working actor again. Momentum is like so important in this business. Yeah. And so having that and just building it up, even if you're going back to doing some co-stars and maybe where you left off was, you know, you hadn't done a co-star in a long time, you, you know, you may want to do that. And, you know, co-star guest star, like, you know, those things aren't necessarily black and white. Like, it's, you know, stop doing co-stars one day and start doing guest stars the next day. Like, there's a lot of reasons why a co-star can be a good thing to do. Um, and there's a reasons why sometimes you want to pass on a co-star. So, you know, you kind of can't look at it that way. You have to look at it. What's going to be good for building up my resume again, building some momentum and kind of really jump starting, starting things. That's great. Um, I got a lot of questions as well about industry referrals. So um, I want to submit to this agent, but I've heard that I need to have an industry referral before you'll even look at you know my submission. And we talked about this a little bit in terms of the pitch, um, mm -hmm. but want to know your thoughts about that. I would say if possible, definitely yes, try to get a referral. That's another, I, I talk <clears throat> about like the filters that I use sometimes as, yeah. I'm, as I'm getting emails and from people. And the ones that came via referral are always going to get looked at. Yeah. They're just always gonna be looked at, especially you know, somebody that I respect. It doesn't have to come from that person, but you could even reference that somebody referred you you know, to me, you know, you could copy them so that then I know for sure that you're not, you know, just feeding me a line that it's, it was actually a referral. Yeah. And that could be, a, a, you know, a, another a fellow actor who's already a client with, with me or the agency could be uh, your, you know, a manager that you work with could be a casting director that you're, you know, tight with. That's really trying to advocate for you uh, could be a acting coach, teacher, there's a lot of different places that referrals can come from. Could be, this happened to me where um, a, a friend, a, a friend sent me somebody who she did a real estate deal with whose daughter was looking to enter the business. So it was like, she referred through, like it can happen. So for that actor, the referral came from a real estate connect connection that her, that her father had <laughs> that knew me. So you just, you just don't know. So I would yeah. say, don't be shy about, even when you're not talking to, even when you're talking, sorry, excuse me, even when you're talking to people that aren't in the industry that you think are going to have any connection to it, don't be shy about saying like, I'm really trying to find an agent. I'm looking for, you know, some connection or referral to anybody because who knows who, what people know. And, and, you know, they might really be able to genuinely help you out. Yeah. Um, the, the caveat I will say to that is, is that make sure that you get somebody's permission. If somebody knows somebody, don't just throw their name out there. Make sure you <laughs> right. ask them, are, are you okay if, you know, I use your name to, to reach out to somebody. So you don't burn a bridge there. <laughs> yeah, because you might follow up on that, and they're like, I, "Oh yeah, I don't." Yeah. And I have, I have, and it has, and it has turned out to be BS. So yeah, be careful about that. That's great. Um, so um, I want to move into I, I have an agent. So I got signed. Hooray! I got an agent. Yay. 
<laughs> how do I best manage this relationship and what should I expect? And I, I think you touched on this a little bit earlier when you talked about, you know, figuring out an agent that works for you and your, um, you know, one that matches what you want out of an agent. Uh, mm -hmm. But just in general, how do I manage that relationship and make sure that I'm doing the right things? Mm hmm. So I think, I think two of the biggest keys are trust and communication, which when you think about it is really not, not dissimilar to any relationship that you have with anybody that is a strong one. You, you need to start off the relationship with one of trust. So trust that your agent is submitting you, pitching you, doing the work that you expect out of them. Now, there might be some training wheels there and that's where communication comes into play. It's really important is, is that you establish those ground rules early on about how, how the agent likes to communicate, how you want to communicate and make sure you guys are all, you know, you're, you're, you're on the same page and trusting that the agent gets you and they are doing their job is really important because you're not going to hear about everything they do for you every single day, all the time. It's just not realistic. That could, it can be one of the hardest things I think for an actor is to, is to trust that their agent is working hard for them. Yeah. And I get that. I, I, I understand that that is a very difficult thing to do. I think checking in with your agent every so often is a valuable thing to do just to make sure that you continue to be, the relationship continues to be strong and that you get a sense that they are doing things. I, I will say the question, like when somebody asked me like, Hey, so what's going on? I'm kind of <laughs> like, I don't really know how to, <laughs> yeah. um, anything, anything going on for me. And, um, I get why, why actors want to ask, ask that question. It's a hard question for agents to answer because if we had something that we, that we had for you at that moment, you would know about it. So the answer is usually, well, I'm submitting you, looking for opportunities, trying to, you know, get you out there. And it would be, that's, it's always the same kind of answer. Otherwise you would know about it. You would know yeah. if, you know, we had an audition coming up for you or there was a meeting we were setting for you or if your availability got checked or it, you know, a variety of things. So, um, so try to have that trust and, um, and, and the communication as well. And communication is, I mean, it, it can come down to as simple as making sure we know that you're going to be out of town, but you're available to self tape, but you can't go in in person. So we, we're not, you know, one of the most frustrating things is when we're pitching and we finally get, you know, a casting director to say yes. And they say, great, we can see them, you know, Friday. And then we learn <laughs> that you're not in town yeah, right. and you didn't tell him. Yeah. Um, it's so, so frustrating. Then I have to go back to the cast director and say, um, well, thank you so much, but they, yeah, they actually, they can't make that. And, you know, can you see them another, another day? And it's just like kind of embarrassing. Right. And so, you know, little things like that, um, are not so little, let's put it that way. Yeah. And yeah. And just communicating as well on like, what's happening in your career? Like, what are you doing to be proactive um, that, you know, that you should share with us? Have you been trying to network and meet other casting directors or um, had, were you at a party and you, you know, rubbed elbows and had a great conversation with a showrunner or a director and who is that person and let us know. So if we can use that in any way as, ammunition in our sales, you know, we absolutely will all of that, all of that career stuff is really helpful to learn about, or even like, oh, I'm going to shoot this a web series, it's, you know, it's supposed to be, you know, it's part of the 48 hour film festival. And, um, you know, just want to let you know, I'm doing it. And I'll let you know what happens. Cool, great. I might slip that into a pitch, like just did a, you know, uh, an awesome, you know, short for a 40 hour film, I, you know, you never know. Yeah. So communicating all that kind of stuff is, is, is really important in keeping that relationship feeling like we're both giving. Yeah. I think that's great advice to, you know, when you're reaching out to your agent to not just ask, 
hey, what are you doing for me? Tell your agent what you're doing um, mm -hmm. and, and say, hey, here's a couple things that I'm working on. Here are some things that I've been doing. And then also any updates because you send an email just like what's going on. Um, you, you have to trust that your agent um, has your best interest at heart and is submitting you for things that you're appropriate for or that you talked about that you want to be submitted for. And, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you, you get called in for an audition. Sometimes you get called back. Sometimes nothing comes from it. But, you know, yeah. their success is your success. So there's no incentive to have a bunch of people on your roster that you, you don't try to submit or pitch on anything. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I, I'm going to, I have so many questions on here, so we're going to, we're going to jump into those. So I'm going to uh, skip through really quickly, but I did have, um, one other question regarding projects. So do agency more projects? Got a lot of questions about, Hey, it's pilot season. I don't see this casting anywhere. Um, do agency things different than what I see as an actor? Yes, absolutely. Uh, you know, one of the reasons why they're, you know, why casting directors use agents um, is because they trust that agents are going to be submitting the right people. They're going to be selective. They're looking for, they know agents, they've developed rapport and, and relationships with agents who they feel like they share their own taste. So there's a lot of reasons for that. So they're putting out their breakdowns through our portal in, you know, there's actors access as everybody is familiar with in terms of theatrical um, and there's and, and um, casting networks for a lot of commercial and print. And, um, and so there's stuff that the actors can submit themselves on, but you're just not seeing everything. The other side is where most of that stuff is coming out. And so especially when it comes to pilots, sure, I think some of those will come out directly to actors to submit on. But pilots, some of the bigger studio features and um, bigger network shows are going to be just released to agents. So it's going to be hard to be submitted on some of that stuff if you don't have an agent. And that's just the reality of it. And it's, and it's by design, I think. Um, I do think these days actors have a lot more um, opportunity to submit themselves because of these online platforms like casting networks where you you can go in and submit yourself whereas that used to be very very difficult to do so so you you know everyone is in a more empowered place to do that but you're just not going to get the exposure to the other probably the projects that you really want to be a part of yeah uh are, are the ones that the majority are released directly to to agents and managers yeah and and like you mentioned there's a reason for that mm -hmm. um I think we should just go into the Q&A because there's so many questions. So um, I have one here that's come up and asked in a couple different ways. But Cher was asking, if I'm looking for new representation, is it okay to first seek a new rep, then send notice to the former rep? Or is it better etiquette to give notice first, then pursue a new rep? So this is a tough one. Um, I will say that I feel like from an ethical point of view, I feel like it's better to tell your current rep that you are looking to make a move. Um, maybe you don't need to say, I'm, I'm leaving you. You don't have to break up <laughs> right away. Yeah. Although prepare yourself that they may want to break up with you if they hear that. Um, but the point is, is I think that if your relationship gets to a point where you are looking for other representation, then you owe it to your current rep to have that conversation. A, want to see if you can fix it. I think that's always the first step. Always take a meeting, talk about what's not working. And if it just feels like you've reached a point where the, the best thing to do is to move on, well then move on. And you may be in between for a, a, a period of time while you're looking for another agent. But don't stay with an agent who's not working hard for you and it's not working out just to have somebody. I mean, I, I, I think that defeats the purpose. So I, I'm a big believer in being upfront about these things. And you know, you might get an agent that's like, okay, look, I get it. 
while you're looking for a new representation, I'm cool with keeping you on board. And if anything happens, you know, obviously they get the commission, et cetera. You know, you, it's still, you know, intact. And, you know, what might happen is, is, is something positive, which is that it lights a fire under that agent. And all of a sudden they're like, oh my God, I'm actually, I'm going to lose this person and I better, I better fight really hard to, to keep them. Um, and you know, maybe they give you, you know, you guys take another chance at it and there's a, a, you know, a changing of the tides there. So I think, I think honesty is, is the best way to go in that scenario. Yeah. I got a lot of questions saying, oh, I, I've gone on one audition the last six months. Should I just go get a new agent? And I want to tell them like, did you talk to your agent yet about that? Or are you just saying like, oh, I, you know, yeah. there, there might be a reason for that. And like, yeah. They more often than not um, will be happy to have that conversation with you. Absolutely. I think that is so important to realize. And I think what actors need to understand too is, is that of course you've noticed that you've only gone on one audition in six months, but so has your agent and your agent may be thinking to themselves, gosh, you know, did I make the right choice in, in taking on this actor? So you both may be questioning the relationship and that's probably a good time to regroup and just talk about things. The other thing to understand is, is that it, sometimes it just takes time. It takes time to get that momentum. You know, I, I've, we had an actor, ha, still have an actor who, when we first signed him, had a really tough time getting him out, didn't book his first TV credit, I think for t two years. And then he booked a, a co-star and then he booked... Um, a series regular and then and then he booked like another series regular. so like it took this is what i'm talking about like yeah. everybody has the same journey a different journey different path and sometimes it just takes some time but you do i mean need to you need to have that conversation with with your agent and talk about it communication's key yeah right. <laughs> so mm -hmm. um this is an interesting question what's the best advice for parents with child actors also thoughts on having multiple agents um, so let's just start with the parents with child actors first. Maybe like if there's one thing that you would recommend to uh, parents who want to get their kids into acting. So I don't represent kids um, and I, I never have. We do have a young people's division in our agency. So um, I'm maybe not the expert in this area. Sure. What I will say is that I think when no matter whatever the age of your child is, I think obviously getting them in classes and focusing on them being as well-rounded as possible. And that could be multiple skills, you know, maybe they're in singing, maybe they're dance, maybe they're also acting. Um, I think that's really important. I think um, getting educated about what it means to have a kid in the industry. There's a website called children in film, childreninfilm.com. Uh, and I think they're a wonderful resource for any um, child actors and their parents. So doing your research, really knowing what you're what you're getting into, because when you have when you have a child or a minor, you know somebody who's who's not a technically an adult, especially if somebody who cannot drive yet, you have to realize that if your child says I want to be in the business, it also means that you're now in the business as a parent and. So your willingness to go along with all that that involves is really important. And then the other thing I would say is just make sure that if you do have a child in the business that you're that you're checking in with them often and making sure they're still loving it and liking it. Um, you know, I think that's important. Kids, kids do things for a certain period of time and then sometimes they are like, ah, I'm done with that and moving on to the next right. thing. So, yeah. you know, make sure that that's something that's still like a passion for them. That's great. And uh, Khalid wants to know, is it frowned upon when someone who has a manager is reaching out to you rather than the manager doing that instead? So, so when some, okay, so can you rephrase that? So, so when the, I have a manager and I'm reaching out to you for representation, should I have my manager reach out to you or should I be doing that? Oh, um, I mean, look, I think if you have a manager, involve your manager in the process. I mean, uh, first of all, I think that you're in it together. I mean, we talked about the team before. Yeah. So like if you're 
yeah, if you're looking for an agent, it's something that you and your manager should be working on together. Also, if I don't know the actor, but I know the manager, well, you're better off having your manager contact me about you than you contacting me directly because I'm going to, it goes back to the referral. I mean, that's a referral and I will, I will almost always, I will, no, I will take, I take that back. I will always look at materials that a manager sends me. Um, it, it's somebody, the manager that I, that I know and that I've worked with before or currently work with. That's great. Um, next question from Alex. Is it okay if you can't make an audition? So maybe we could expand on that a little bit. So in terms of your availability, this is a question that I kind of wanted to get into. Like, how should I best um, manage my availability with my agent so that I'm not missing auditions? Having a flexible schedule is is really important. That being said, like life is, it's life and things come up and people also have to have sometimes day jobs or other jobs that help them pay their bills. So tr being as flexible as you can with your schedule is, is, is key. We understand when you just can't move something around and we will try to move the audition or at least you know request a self tape if there's no other option thankfully that's a more accepted solution these days you know for casting to to accept a self tape yeah. used to not be that way so everybody's lucky in that regard i would say the most important thing for me is is that if i see that there's a pattern where a client is like constantly having issues with their schedule and not available. And we're spending all our time trying to rearrange and, you know, get them a different day or a time. And, and it's just every single, every single appointment, it's like, that's what we're going through or, you know, it comes down to the wire and, you know, they had a self tape due and it's not by the deadline. Um, all of those things speak to the level of commitment that the actor has for their career. And it makes me question, you know, am I more dedicated and committed to their career than they are? Yep. And should that really be the way it is? So, um, so yeah, I mean, I think uh, things come up. So the, it doesn't, it's not like, you know, you have to be available hundred percent of the time, but yeah, I, there has to be a level of commitment there. Yeah, I think it's more if it's a consistent problem, then, you know, then you're going to have a conversation with your agent more than likely. Yes. Um, Danielle was wondering, do casting, um, casting directors give agents feedback why they don't want to call in their client? Uh, I Maybe I want to rephrase this a little bit in terms of do casting directors give you feedback about your talent after they maybe come in and audition? Okay, so I would say sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I would say sometimes. Um, it can be very hard to, A, just get feedback in general from casting directors. They're, they're very busy and they see a lot of actors and it's oftentimes not the best use of their time to be just getting giving feedback all the time. Um, so. I don't ask for it after every single audition that an actor goes on. I will ask for it if, you know, I'm especially curious about how somebody did, um, you know, maybe there's been a trend with an actor not like going on a lot of auditions and not booking. And maybe I need to see, like get some feedback from casting to see if I can pick up on anything so we can troubleshoot. Um, but you know, a lot of times the, um, I don't remember who I first heard this from, but um, the phrase that, you know, the, the callback is the feedback. So basically if you get a callback, <laughs> yeah. you did a good job. Um, or if you get your avail checks, you did a good job. Um, you know, and, and sometimes we will get feedback and they'll simply say, you know, they did a good job, but played too young or played too old or, you know, we're going a different direction. I mean, stuff that doesn't speak as much to how well the performance was, but some other factors that are involved. And I think that what tells that's what that that should tell you that there are so many variables and so many factors. So, yeah, 
Um, it is. I wish that we could get beautifully crafted <laughs> feedback about every audition yep. that our clients go on. It would be amazing, but unfortunately, not realistic. Yep. Uh, that's. I get that question all the time regarding feedback. It's like it's. They're seeing so many people. There's just not enough time in the day. Um, we got time for one more question, and it's from Jessica who asked, can you ask your agent in your regional area for a referral for another representation in another market? Um, so I guess you mentioned earlier that you'll work with agencies in London or in Canada or Atlanta, that sort of thing. So um, I guess how would I know if I'm represented by an agent in Atlanta, but I want to you know, to eventually go out to LA and I, I want to have representation there. Um, should I ask my agent for a referral that they might know, or is that awkward or what should I do? No, I mean, I, I don't think it's awkward. I've certainly had agents in regional markets say, you know, we have this great actor here. They're, they're now, they can now work in LA as a local or they're going to be moving. Will you take a look? And, you know, we want to continue to represent them in the regional market, but they also want to expand. And so I think it's perfectly acceptable. It's, it's kind of like what I was saying about using your manager and that teamwork to, to help you. It helps expand your career and can be beneficial to everybody. So, you know, definitely utilize them as a referral if you can. Yeah, I mean, solid. It goes back to communication again. Tell your agent mm -hmm. what you want and just be, you know, upfront about it and, if you're exactly. clear uh, about what you want and you know who you are, then it's not going to be awkward. And then you can yep. have that conversation. Um, yes. Let's see. Maybe I have time for one more. If you got time for one more question. Sure. <laughs> let's see. Um, okay. From Shannon. What's the difference between multi-listing and being exclusive? Also, are all of your actors exclusive to your agency? What was the word multi? Uh, multi listed. So multi listed. So basically, where you have more than one agent right. or representative. Um, so I'm going to start with the second question. So all of our clients are exclusive to our agency, like depending on what the department is. So for theatrical, with the exception of if they do have a regional. Uh, agent a representation in which case there's communication with a regional rep and we determined between companies who, who's handling what and typically it's the regional rep is handling things that cast and, sh and you know shoot in the regional market and 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 then the um, LA rep or the New York rep is probably handling everything else um, I think that there are some I don't know how many agencies operate on a non-exclusive basis anymore on where you can, it used to be free, like we'd use the word freelance or you could just freelance with a bunch of different agents. Um, kind of varies by uh, market too. Yeah, I, I think you're right. Um, I mean, it, it's really going to just depend on the agency that you're with and if, and if they do that and if that's part of their business practice, that's just not the way we do it. I don't particularly like that model. I feel like um, it becomes a competition too much with other yep. reps in an unhealthy way. Um, I feel like it can get sticky with casting directors getting submissions from, you know, three agencies that all say they rep you theatrically yep. and they're getting submissions from all three and they don't know who to go to. So I don't know. I think actors sometimes think that, oh, well, I have representation all over the place. I have all these different people looking out for me. It can backfire. Right. And I think having one agent who is knows that you are theirs exclusively yes. and that is passionate about you, I think is more desirable than the other scenario. Yep. More often than not, it's, it's helpful and, or, you know, it hurts that the more yeah. reps that you have, um, you know, obviously with exceptions. So, we're out of time. I know, though, that you... Goodbye. I know. So uh, in the description, we added a link um, to a book. If you want to talk about that for a second before we end. Sure. Yeah. I, I just... Um, I couldn't not take this opportunity to let everybody know that um, coming soon, I have a book that I've written called 10 Top 10s from a 10 Percenter. 
10% are being me. And it's uh, over 100 acting career tips and um, bits of information for actors of all levels. And it's something that I've compiled over my years of experience. And I'm very excited about getting that information out to the world. So if you want to go to that link and get on the mailing list, I'll make sure that you know when the book is going to be released. And um, you can have all this information and more in the, in, in the form of a book. That's awesome. Definitely check it out. Thank you so much, Brianna, for doing this with us. It had a lot of comments, a lot of people watching, um, tons of really great advice. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Happy to be here and stay safe and be well, everybody. All right. See ya.